Traders, you are reading this correctly. This is the sequel to the Big Banks video I shot almost two and a half years ago, the video that pretty much launched this entire channel. Now, I understand sequels are not always a great idea. Sometimes they're just there for no reason, but other times they are necessary. They clarify what you saw in the past, and they set you up for what you're about to see in the future. Now, where is this video going to lie on that spectrum? I don't know, but let's give it a try. So there are probably three or four different types of people who are going to be watching this video. The first are going to be my hardcores who have seen every video I have ever done, and this is just the next one they're about to see. There are some of you who just got done watching the Big Banks video for the first time, and you saw the link in the description below and you want to know more. That's really good too. Or maybe you are watching the Core Concepts playlist in sequence. And this is just the next video that came after Big Banks. So this is going to be a little bit strange for some of you um, and the group before you because you are officially traveling almost two and a half years into the future. And when you're done, the very next video you're about to see is probably going to take you right back to where you were chronologically. Uh, but that's okay. One of the biggest questions I get on this channel is, you know, I'm watching this material two years after the fact. Is it still relevant? It absolutely is. This channel was created to be evergreen, which means hopefully 10, 15 years down the road, if you discover this channel for the first time, it will be every bit as relevant as it was back when it was originally shot. That was always the goal of this channel. Um, but with this video here, you got to understand, I was still very new as a video creator. I had no idea what this channel was going to turn into. I had no idea what type of questions people were going to have. You know, you know, all this stuff made sense to me, but I never really put it out there before. So I learned a few things over time. And I do understand that some of the things I said, especially in that video, because I was trying to cover so much, do need a bit of clarification. And I clarified some of these things in other videos, but I think the easiest way and probably the best way to get everybody set up for success going forward is to make sure that everyone who saw the Big Banks video has no questions going forward about what they just saw. And so I'm going to do my best to clarify everything here. For a lot of my hard courses, it's going to be a really good review, um, but I feel like there's a definite place for this video right here. Now, before we start, I just want everybody to know, at the end of the day, I am just one guy with one opinion, one theory. I just happen to also have a YouTube channel, so more people get to hear it, and that's really it. It doesn't make it any more or less valid. Now, what I always try to do, though, is back up my claims with evidence, with logic, with anything I have to hopefully project my point and my theory to you the best I can, and then you can just take it from there. That's really all it is. But... In this video, before we do anything, I know a lot of you guys are new. You're wondering, what is this guy talking about? Should I invest any of my time hearing anything else this guy is going to bring to the table? I think the answer is a solid and definitive yes. And many people who have gone through the material on this channel are going to tell you the same thing. This channel has done some really extraordinary things since I first shot that video. And if there's any question whether you should be here or not, I'm going to do my best to answer that. Also, I want to break this theory down a little bit further. Um, I feel like I covered it pretty well, but there were still some questions that I kept getting over and over. So now would probably be the best time to address them, as opposed to me going in and trying to individually answer all these questions in the YouTube comments section. That's a really bad waste of time. It's better just to do it here. Also, one of the key takeaways of that video. One of the things that got a lot of people really excited was when they saw those sentiment indicators I showed you for the first time. Now, getting access to these indicators has changed a little bit, and I want to clarify the way we read these indicators, explain what we use them for, and what we do not use them for, because I think there was some confusion there as well. Also, towards the end, especially if you are new. I want to take this time 
to explain to everybody the best course of action going forward if you want to learn the no-nonsense Forex way of trading. I want this road to go a lot smoother for you and really for me too. Um, so stay tuned for that towards the end. But that does beg the question, uh, should you move forward with this? Is it in your best interest? Uh, well, I would say it certainly is. Um, this channel has had an incredible success rate. You have to understand, the success rate in Forex is abysmally low, lower than probably any other traded market on earth. Uh, you know, there's a lot of reasons for that. And what we do here flies in the face of many of those reasons. And as a result, this channel has done something no other channel has ever done in a fairly short amount of time. As I record this video on a Sunday in late June 2020, we have already turned 33 people, I think, give or take one or two, taken them from break even or losing traders to traders who now don't even have to risk their own money. They get to keep all that. They got hired on by firms and those firms have given them their money to trade on their behalf. It's the best of everything. It is a level of success so few people ever thought they would ever get to see. And those dreams finally got to be realized. Um, I will link this in the description. It'll be the, the testimonials tab. It'll take you to my website where the people who have turned pro as a result of this channel posted their story and where they got hired and how it all happened. And I would, I, I would even say that this is this 33 number is on the low side because I've seen people in the YouTube comments section thank me for turning them pro and then they don't fill out the form, which is fine. You're not required to, but just know when I say 33, it's probably even higher than that, which is just incredible. You know, congratulations to all of you out there who have either done it or very, very close. You've come a long way, uh, but we do take a contrarian approach here and you absolutely must. When the success rate is so low and almost everybody who doesn't make it is doing the same things, the same incorrect things, the same boneheaded things, it is in your best interest to do the complete opposite or at least take an approach to where you really want to stay as far away from these mistakes as possible. Now, it's not a dumb, blind, contrarian approach where we just automatically do the opposite of what they're doing. That's really hard to figure out. Um, but you will see, and the, the Big Banks video sets you up for this very thing, taking a contrarian approach to where you want to really, really make sure you are not on the radar of the Big Banks, because unbeknownst to almost every trader out there, they are heavily against what the majority of traders do. And if you just figure that part out, you know, the rest of the contrarian stuff is going to start to make a lot more sense. Uh, but if you don't like the idea of being contrarian, if that, that's just something you're against, then you're really not going to like this channel and you're, you're better off served somewhere else. However, if you're all about it and you want to see what we do and you want to turn pro someday, there is a correct approach and a very incorrect approach. You have to use this channel like a grown up. This is a college course. You know, look, you got to look at it that way. It's free for one. So it's not like a college course, but it's also effective, which is also unlike most college courses. You know, this, but it's something you have to be very deliberate and take your time and go slow. Take notes. You know, don't look for quick little shortcuts. That's not the game. That's going to get you killed every single time. This is a grown-ups game. It is a three to six trillion dollar market. There are no quick fixes. You're going to see a lot of people selling quick fixes, but they never ever work. At the end of the day, the people who buckle down and do this right are in a much better place to succeed than literally everybody else. Now, the one thing I would ask as a courtesy to me is if you have any questions on anything I talk about, write it off to the side. I can not guarantee, but I can say with a lot of certainty that there's a really, really good chance your question is going to get answered and answered in a really good way, not just a yes or no answer with no nuance. No, that's not how this works. Your question is probably going to get answered in a future video. So I'm not sure if you knew this, but if you go to YouTube, you can click on literally anybody's YouTube channel. And you will see this little thing right here. This is a search box. So you might be wondering, you know, VP sounds really intelligent 
and handsome. Let's see what his opinion on trend lines are, because I have always wanted to know. And voila, there it is. Big letters. You know, now you already saw this video, but one of the biggest questions I get on the Big Banks video is, does this work for stocks? Because we have a lot of stock traders coming over and checking this out. And what do you know? Right there. Now, this still isn't the best way to go because those of you who have seen the stocks video know that a lot of what I talk about is not going to make a ton of sense unless you've already gone through all the material first. This is why I think the best idea is just to go in order. I'm going to link the beginner's video and the home page to my website. You can go to either place and learn exactly what to do and exactly what sequence to watch these videos and podcast episodes in to where it makes the most amount of sense. Uh, but let me stress this one more time. The slow, deliberate, and patient approach is always going to be the best approach when you're trying to learn something brand new and you are trying to take down a $3 trillion to $6 trillion a day market. Uh, lack of patience is going to get you beat up over and over every single time. So if you think there's just a question out there that you just can't move forward until you get the answer to it, just move forward anyway. It's going to get answered. You know, it's, I have taken a lot of time and put in a lot of work to make all of this material for you and cover as much ground as I possibly can, you know, on almost anything you could possibly ask. Just do everybody a favor, including yourself, and go through it the right way. All right. I think it's really going to pay off. And if at any point you want to click on that testimonials tab below in the description, you're going to see just how well it has paid off for a lot of people already this early in the game. But in terms of the big banks, I think when a lot of you watch that video for the first time, different thoughts and different emotions came up as you were watching the video. I think a lot of people had this aha moment to where they thought, oh, this is the reason why I'm losing in Forex. Um, indirectly, yes, <laughs> the main reasons you're losing is because you just haven't developed that money management or trading psychology yet, and you're getting a lot of your information from the wrong sources. Those are the main reasons. Uh, but the big banks, I guess you could say, are one of those reasons. However, they are not to be hated. So a lot of people in the comments section too saying, oh, screw the big banks, you know, F you, all this kind of stuff. Actually, we kind of want this phenomenon to occur because we are able to take advantage of it. If it, for some reason, one day stops happening, then I think Forex is going to start moving more like stocks, which, you know, we will still be able to make money from. It's just going to be different. Um, I kind of like the way things are right now. And I think over time, you're going to learn to appreciate this as well. So... Don't spend so much time getting angry at the big banks. Don't spend so much time arguing with me over why this phenomenon actually occurs. I have my own theory. Some people have their theories too. They're like, no, no, it's all about order books and options, expiration dates and all this kind of stuff. It's all irrelevant. You know, we'll, we'll never know exactly how this plays out. I'm not in the room with these <laughs> bank traders you know, asking them with my, you know, my hidden microphone, you know, so how, how are we going to screw over retail traders today? And then I lean forward so they can talk into the mic. It doesn't work that way. You know, people like you and I will never know the exact pathology of why these people do what they do and exactly how they accomplish that. But one thing's for sure, this does happen. Uh, not, not in the overall Forex market, but in the spot Forex market, the market we actually participate in. Now, if I didn't already prove to you the best I could in the Big Banks video of why this happens, uh, there have been story after story come out since the video has been made that proves this very point and proves that this phenomenon happens over and over. Not least of which was this story right here from back in 2019. Uh, the regulators who really, all right, everybody's like, oh, isn't this illegal? I'm like, well, <laughs> yeah, it's illegal, but who cares if it's not properly enforced. And so the regulatory bodies will do this every once in a while just to make it look like they're doing their jobs because most people who are reading these stories are not like you and I. You know, they see something like this, they say, "Wow, look at those big banks. Look at that big fine, 1.2 billion dollars. Wow, they the regulators are really doing their job. These banks really got theirs, didn't they?" But if you break it down, especially this right here, like I don't know this for sure, but what was it? A total. They've been fined a total. These banks, 
have been fined not each, but a total of $1.2 billion. All these banks right here. So if you break that up, what is it? You know, what is that? One day's work? Two days work? That's nothing. They're not even going to jail. <laughs> they, they gladly just pay the fine and then just keep going about their day. So the answer to the questions, is this happening? Is this illegal? And is it being enforced are all yes, but you, again, you just have to understand the nuances. I'll link this article in the description as well. It's really good. It shows how they all work together with each other, and it shows all this, God, this nonsense window dressing. What is it? Okay, so as the regulators come out and they say, today we have fined these evil banks and their cartel decisions uh, to send them a clear message that by fining them one day's worth of revenue, <laughs> they understand that this will not be tolerated in the future. Okay, yes. Okay, regulatory bodies, you're doing a great job. Nothing to see here. Move on. And again, this is not something to get upset over. You know, I don't sit there and get upset over things I cannot control. If anything, I use things like this to give me a greater measure of control over what I do for a living, and that is forex trading. And I hope through these big banks videos that you were able to do the same. So stop wasting time over whether this happens or not, because it does. And then also stop wasting time wondering about exactly how and why this happens. The important part is that it does, and the result of what they do is remarkably consistent. Now, we're going to look at this again in just a moment, but this is really what we worry about here. You know, you can sit there and argue minutia and play that game. It's not going to make you any money. We are here to make money, and this is something we can use to our advantage tremendously. Now, you're wondering how. For starters, really at the, the core of what we do is understanding why price moves up and down. You know, I, I use this percentage ad nauseum, I'm sure, but I, I would guarantee you 99% of Forex traders have no idea why price moves up and down and who makes price move up and down. This is really important to know. And for a lot of you stock traders that are carrying over, it's almost the opposite of what you are used to. So many stock traders come into the Forex market, and I have a feeling pretty soon a lot more are going to be coming into the Forex market, uh, and they think everything that they had learned in the past carries over to this market as well, and that is a crucial mistake, and they wonder why they fail just as much as everybody else does. You have got to know the difference. Your typical supply and demand principles don't apply here. Things like herd mentality and greater fool theory do not apply here. It's totally different. It's easy to think it's the same, but it's not. And knowing this key difference is really, really important. So at this point, you might be thinking, okay, I got it. I understand this concept. Uh, I'm down with it. Now what do I do? Well, the future videos tell you exactly how. By doing things which keep us off the bank's radar as much as possible. The bank punishes the majority of traders. So we're going to end up in the majority sometimes, but we are going to end up in the minority a lot more often, which over time ups our odds. It gives us more wins and it gives us less losses. Now you're going to make thousands of trades in your life. So when you map this whole thing out over time, those little percentage points you can increase in your wins and decrease in your losses make a really, really big difference. Now, if you're starting out and you're watching these videos in sequence, you're about to see some videos that show you exactly how to do this. In particular, avoiding reversal trading, which is what the majority of traders try to do. We got that buy low, sell high mantra lodged in our heads from the start, and we just never got away from it. You really need to in Forex. It's crucial. Um, how to avoid common tools that everybody else uses. If you're using the same tools they are, chances are you're going to end up in the majority. Now, I've had some people in the comments section too say, well, how about I just take those tools and do the opposite? Not a bad idea. Um, I think this is going to be harder to accomplish than you think it is. I think the best way is just to go through the curriculum and learn a way that just naturally avoids all of these pitfalls. That's my best idea. And one of those things you can do too, especially early on, is be really cautious when you trade pairs, currency pairs involving the United States dollar. Because this, for some reason, is where everybody wants to trade. It's where the majority is hanging out. And the banks know that. You know, why would the banks waste their time on pairs where not a lot of people are trading? Um, so you certainly want to trade dollar pairs in the future, but early on, it's best to remain cautious. 
Now, really the smoking gun showing you how all these things are necessary came when I showed you the sentiment tools, um, such as the IG Client Sentiment Index and also the SSI indicator from FXCM. Um, they are two separate tools which really attempt to do the exact same thing. And as I shoot this video in 2020, you can find the IG Client Sentiment Index online. And unless you're a part of FXCM, uh, I think the only way you can access it is by following it on Twitter. Uh, we will take a look at the IG Client Sentiment Index. I don't think I need to waste time with the other one. Um, just know that you can find it on Twitter. And while we're here, it has the tendency to show you what's going on on the four hour time frame and the daily time frame. Without getting too deep into why we do things on this channel, you are going to want to only pay attention to the daily time frame. Now, on the IG Client Sentiment Index, they only show you the daily, so it's pretty easy. Let's go there now. And here we are. Fear not, I will link this down below as well. There are a few different links out there, and not all of them are good. I'm going to give you the good one. Uh, so this is the Client Sentiment Index. And I'm shooting this on a Sunday, so we're looking at Friday's data. I'm going to make this go a lot quicker for you. So all this stuff right here, you pretty much want to ignore. It's not very helpful. In terms of trading, this whole thing is not terribly helpful, but it does a really good job of showing you why this Big Banks phenomenon happens. And you can play with this as much as you want, but you're going to realize something. You're going to find a few things out. When price is consolidating and not going anywhere, these things can be a bit hard to read. What you really want to do is look at the overall movement by traders. When they are all short and they start going long, in pairs that involve the United States dollar, for example, you are almost always going to see price go in the opposite direction. If you try doing this on non-dollar pairs, it's going to work sometimes, but it's also not going to work sometimes, and things are not going to make a whole lot of sense. Um, but when you look at actual dollar pairs, this happens a lot, it happens often, and it repeats. Case in point, the most heavily traded pair on planet Earth, the Euro USD. So these things aren't going to be super smooth all the time, and like especially in these consolidation zones right here, uh, we're they're really trying to figure out where price is going to go. Now, you can go candle by candle and still see this phenomenon play out fairly well. Um, but what you really want to look at is when, <clears throat> excuse me, when people, when traders start moving from net short to net long in a hurry. You can pretty much guarantee price is going to go the other way. They had second thoughts for a minute, price reacted, and then they really started to go long and then price really started to go short all the way up until they decided not to go long anymore and they all decided to go short at the same time and look what happened and you see this happening a lot you, know, you want to see those really big almost coordinated moves that traders make and see what happens to price as a result if you do this on pairs not involving the united states dollar like i said you know you're gonna have time to look at this and play with it you're not going to see this happen nearly as often because there's just a lot less traders there. And a lot of times, such as if you look at maybe the uh, the euro pound, you will see it's really just a combination of what happened in the euro dollar and the pound dollar. You know, a lot of times that's just what cross pairs are. So focus on where traders are. It's a big thing. I pointed that out in the Big Banks video. I pointed it out again in the sentiment video, but it does bear repeating for anybody that wants to use these charts. So that part was a bit of a review. Now we have covered quite a few different markets on this channel over the last two and a half years. And this client sentiment applies on some of those markets, but certainly not all of those markets. Let's take a look. So let's look at precious metals. Let's look at gold. So with precious metals, not really. I mean, you can see it happening sometimes, but there really isn't much correlation. And now, why is that? Uh, well, if you remember, when it comes to trading gold, we trade spot gold, which means we trade gold against the United States dollar. 
Now, banks typically do have a say on a day-to-day -day basis what happens with the United States dollar. They have very little control over what happens to gold. Now, out of gold and the United States dollar on a day-to-day -day basis, we learned that gold, the price of gold, is in much greater control over what happens to that pair. So when the banks can't really manipulate as much as they want, this is what you have. You know, something that just really doesn't make a whole lot of sense and really isn't very helpful. And silver, you're going to find this to be the case even more so. Case in point, I mean, what are you going to do with that? Nothing. You know, it's just kind of there. Um, it's interesting to look at, but yeah, it's uh, just, it doesn't work everywhere. And that's the reason why. You know, the metals, when you trade metals against the United States dollar, for example, the metals drive the bus. They are in control. And the banks don't have a whole lot of say over things like that. So what about the big question that so many people want to know? Does this apply to stocks? Not, I mean, individual stocks, there's no way to know because this doesn't come out for individual stocks. But certain indices, let's take a look. So here's the S&P 500. Now, maybe it's not as clean as some of the currency pairs are, but you will see when did the big drop happen? When people stopped going short, tried to buy the dips, and started going long. Now, there's a lot of choppiness, a lot of confusion on the way down because we've never, we, we haven't seen this in a very, very long time, especially not to that degree. You guys remember when this was happening? It was crazy. A lot of confusion in the market. And so you had traders doing all sorts of different things. But the important part is they were down here. And as it was dropping, they were up here. And it didn't go back up until they were down here again. You know, that's really the big takeaway. You see some things that don't make a whole lot of sense, kind of like right there. Um, but I can also say this. It correlates enough to where I know that we are not going to see that next big move down until traders get longer again. I can say this with not 100% certainty, but it's happened almost every single time. You know, it's like all these people are can, so confused. Like, uh, I'm, I'm overall bearish on the market. And so I follow a lot of really smart macroeconomic people and uh, precious metals people. And so many of them, as smart as they are, just cannot figure this out. They're like, all these terrible fundamentals are happening in the market. And price is not going down, and they're so outraged over it, and they can't believe it. If they only knew about this, <laughs> this is the reason. The market's not going to turn over until people go long. Um, I don't like making predictions, but I'm, I feel pretty safe making that one. Uh, now, they could go long and just flip right back short again, and then we're, we're back to where we were. I don't know. But until they go long and stay long, we're not going to see that next big move down. Um, now, this is the most heavily traded index on the planet. If you go to some of the smaller ones like the CAC or the Zetradex, you know, you're going to see this a little bit, but it's going to be a little choppier and not as clean. You know, like I said, you can play around with this all you want, but just know where the majority of people are is where you're going to see this happen the most, unless it's something like precious metals or like crypto. <laughs> Why <laughs> they continue to post this on a daily basis, I will never know. <laughs> There's no correlation at all. It makes me laugh every time I see it. Stop wasting our time and your poor employees' time and stop putting these things out. It makes no difference. You know, people are generally going to be long, you know, Ripple and Ethereum and Bitcoin for a very long time and price is going to move up and down. There is no real correlation there. So just know that when you see it. But here's a real big takeaway traders. I think a lot of you saw this and the same thing that happened to me happened to you. Your eyes got really big. You were like, wow, this is like the COT report, only it actually works. I get to have an advanced look on where traders are going and all I have to do is go the opposite way. Or I can just wait until maybe like these lines cross or this color changes and make my move that way. I can use this as a trend confirmation indicator. Uh, please give up on that dream right now. Because unfortunately, as a trend confirmation indicator, this whole thing, no matter which pair you're looking at, does a really poor job. Uh, because understand, it's not where traders are when it 
comes time for us to enter a trade, it really matters where they're going. And there is no way for anybody to know that in advance. It's just not. Now, there are other indicators out there which do a pretty good job of this. And if you find them, they are to your advantage. But you're going to have to find them on your own, just like everybody else on this channel has had to do. I do give a few out, um, but for the most part, it's going to take some searching and testing and things like that. You're not just going to be able to go here and have this one all gift wrapped for you and be able to use it to your advantage. It doesn't work that way. Trust me, I tried. I really, really wanted this thing to work, but it just doesn't. Um, and another thing too, I see some people use this the wrong way as well. They're like, well, I'm on the dollar Swissy and I just got a long signal, but a lot of traders are already long. I don't want to be on the majority side. Again, it's not where they are. It's where they're going. So if you had that mentality and you passed on that long, you would have really missed out on a big move up. You know, so don't let that happen to you. Do not use this in your trading. Check it out. Have fun with it, but keep it completely separate from what you do on a day-to-day -day basis. I don't feel like I explained this well enough in the first video, so I want this to be one of the biggest takeaways you get out of this video before you move forward. So really to wrap this part up, it's good for proving my point about the big banks. And if there's any doubt in your mind, um, maybe use this to kind of get you closer to my side because it's worked really well for me. And it's worked really well for so many of the traders on this channel, whether you fully buy into the theory or not. All right. But understand those tools are not good to trade with. I think that's a big mistake. So many people made, um, it's the same mistake I made and I wasted a lot of time on it. I don't want you to waste any time on it. Um, and also understand too, it does not apply everywhere. Um, but it definitely applies to the areas where the banks are allowed to have the most manipulation. So think dollar pairs, overall stock markets, things like that. Now, even though you don't see this happen too often in the precious metals market, for example, or even in crypto, we have ways on this channel to where we are able to trade those markets as well at a very high level. Um, so stick around for that. But let's wrap this whole thing up in conclusion. Just understand the phenomenon known as the big banks. It is crucial to the rest of your trading, whether you decide to follow this channel or not. But just know if you try to go against it and say, I'm just going to go ahead and use all those common tools and stay in the majority and try to pick tops and bottoms, it's really not in your best interest. You will have a common enemy here, and that enemy is bigger and stronger and has much more influence than you do. So good luck with that. It's better just to avoid it altogether. And that's what we do here. Uh, but understand a couple things in this whole process. There are no shortcuts to winning this game. All right. I just want you to understand sentiment's role. It does play a big role in Forex, probably not the way you thought it did. Um, but after you've learned this, you can kind of just, you know, file it away and move on. And if you want to move on in this channel, let me tell you, it is the place to be. Now that you have this base knowledge, you are already so far ahead of so many traders, traders that have put in five, 10 years in this market will never grasp this concept. And they're constantly going to be floating in space. You know, you're in a really good place. You might as well keep this momentum going. And if you want to follow a channel that has gotten a rabid fan base following and has already created dozens of professional traders, then if you haven't already, subscribe and hit the bell. Now remember, this channel is not set up at all for people who are looking for quick fixes. This channel actually greatly upsets those people. If, but if you are somebody who wants to go slow and do things the right way and understands the give and take, understands that you know, if, if you're really going to take money out of a, the largest and most heavily traded market in the world, it's, there's nothing quick about it. It's going to take time. It's going to take time out of your day to learn. And patience is just something you simply cannot afford not to have. Well, then you are exactly who we're looking for here. So if you haven't subscribed, hit subscribe. Definitely hit the bell because I used to come out with videos every Monday and then a new podcast episode every Thursday. I no longer do that um, because this material is evergreen. We don't talk about what's going on in the markets on a week to week basis or anything like that. These are concepts, and there's only so many uh, that you have to learn about, and then we're kind of done, which we pretty much are. I still come up with other videos every 
two months, three months, something like that. And so you're definitely going to want to see when those come out because there's no longer any consistency. If you don't hit the bell, you're not going to know. Uh, but for the newer traders, I wish you the absolute best on your journey. It's going to be such a great ride. Just understand that your success all depends on what you do and the choices you make going forward. All right? So make it happen. Go get it.